Hey there, Libra. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So please keep in mind, guys, that this is going to be a general reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keeping with last month's, uh, what's the word I keep? I keep losing this word. What's the word? process of format. There we go. Keeping with last month's format, this is going to be, there are going to be two sections to this reading. So check the timestamps down below if you would like to skip to a certain section. The first section is going to be me speaking directly with a Libra rising. And from that point of view, we are using true sidereal astrology, not mainstream tropical astrology. Okay. So it's going to be different from what you are used to when it comes to mainstream astrology. If you have never seen your sidereal chart, I highly encourage you to reach out to me. I would be very happy to provide a copy of your chart to you free of charge. If you would like an interpretation or a reading, I would have to charge you for that, but that is available to you if you're interested, yes? But the second half of this reading is going to be the non-denominational side of this reading. So um, I'm just gonna be pulling on collective energies or messages for the collective of Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, whatever placement you have within Libra. If you're curious about it, check out that reading it may, or that part of the reading, it may resonate for you. Also the second half of the reading is uh, where a cross watcher would most likely wanna go to get some messages for their Libra, yes? Now, with all of that said, I am available for a private reading, whether you would like a, a, a sidereal astrology a re reading, or if you would like just a plain old tarot reading, or if you'd like both, yes? Some of the readings that I offer can be found in the description box below, along with my email. So if you are interested in a reading, just go ahead and shoot me an email, letting me know you're interested, and I would be very happy to facilitate that for you. Yeah. If you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, and if you would like to support the channel, definitely check us out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Lots of great material over there. Um, and it's a great way to really join the family, join the community here and to support the channel. Yes. Without you guys, I would not be able to be here. So thank you so, so very much. Uh, okay. Um, I believe that's it. Spiel over. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's let's get into this for my Libra risings. Hi, Libra. Welcome to February. Yeah. So um, continuing with the message of last month here, um, the the title for you. I'm sorry. Continuing in the storyline that started last month. The title for you here is you have a message to send this month, or at least you're coming to the awareness of and or coming to terms with the fact that you have a new message to bring to the collective as in people that you serve or just people closest to you within the realm of your interpersonal relationships and i was getting a, a two-sided vibe from that libra um some of you really do have a message to send in terms of healing especially if you are a public servant somehow um, a leader, a guide, a healer, whatever. I was definitely getting that vibe there. But then also, and the stronger end of the vibe that I was getting for this is that this has a lot to do. This is heavily uh, associated with your romantic life or just your interpersonal relationships, which makes perfect sense, Libra, because Venus up until the end of January, Venus has been retrograde through Sagittarius, and that has been helping us reshape our values, reshape our alignment with our values, right? But also what's helping to facilitate that is the fact that uh, Uranus up until the end of January, wait, yes, I'm sorry, uh, Uranus has been retrograde through the sign of Aries, and that has been helping us change and transform our personal sense of alignment, all right? Okay. So, um, like I said, you do have a message to send here. Uh, and this message feels like it's strongly coming from certain personal experiences and or specifically from what the Mercury retrograde transit has been facilitating for you. But then also that feels like it's connected to what the Venus retrograde transit has been facilitating. With all that said, Libra, let's get into your chart. In front of you, you do see the chart for a Libra rising for the month of February of 2022. Let's, oh no, not this, <laughs> not this either. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if you guys could see that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's get into this here, let's talk about this. So again, you have a message to send here. And to me, that's really coming through because you have all of 
of this energy concentrated within your third house, which is the house of communication. I also like to say the house of commerce here. So there can be some business things that come up in the third house. Uh, but specifically it's the house of communication of learning and teaching, you know, of just associating with people and all that kind of stuff. Third house is ruled by Mercury and Mercury has been going retrograde. Mercury's retrograde motion will end officially. Mercury will, Mercury will officially be have stationed direct by the 6th of February. All right. And for you, Libra, Mercury has been transiting retrograde from your fourth house where it started back into your third. So as I was reading through this and looking at this and noticing, paying attention to what Mercury has been doing for you, the very first thing was that you have a message to send here because of this. Now, a lot of this message comes from a sense of realignment with personal nurturance, okay? the fourth house energies. This is where Mercury started its retrograde motion for you. The fourth house is how we nurture and love ourselves, how we care for ourselves, also how we learn, nurture and care for others. Specifically for you, Libra, I'm feeling like for many of you that has been heavily affected by Venus having gone retrograde. And the biggest thing, the dominant energy I felt in terms of that for the collective of Libra was within your interpersonal and specifically your romantic situations. So, um, now helping you to facilitate this, this change in how you care for yourself, how you nurture yourself. First of all, you do have Chiron here in Pisces. Chiron is stationed in your sixth house right now. And so in terms of the healing aspects that are happening for you at this moment, Libra, this is heavily influenced or heavily, uh, uh, um, influencing your house of health and wellness, right? and your house of personal service. The sixth house is the first point within the Zodiac house system that we come into contact directly with being of service to others. The other part of that is where we get into the 11th house here, but you don't really have anything going on in the 11th house right now. This is all about, I just heard, personal fulfillment, personal satisfaction, and your personal sense of health and wellness. And with Mercury having moved from your fourth house retrograde back into your third house, in which I feel like Mercury is literally kind of pulling us backwards giving us an opportunity to rewrite the programming okay so check out my Mer mercury retrograde video in terms of that which is specifically titled a chance to rewrite the programming for all of us it feels like mercury is pulling us backwards to get us in alignment with and to facilitate facilitate the changes with the changes in ourselves that have been happening chiron here in your sixth house is helping you to heal in terms of your personal sense of well-being mentally, physically, emotionally, romantically, spiritually, whatever, okay? Now, the other thing here that really screams to me sending a message or expressing yourself is the fact that you, Libra, have Neptune and Jupiter in your fifth house, okay? Now, let me start here. Mars and Neptune in the month of January formed a bit of a square. Don't think it's exact, but it's a bit of a square. It's enough of a square for us to feel the effects of it. And as I've been talking about on the channel for the last few months, the masculine is going through a massive change, a massive realignment, a massive healing process. Throughout the month of January, Mars here, which is currently in your third house as of the 1st of January, of February, excuse me, but Mars transited through Scorpio, which brought up a lot of things underneath the surface about our masculine side or the masculine collective or our sense of action, our sense of drive, how it is we go forward about things, how it is we pursue things. Yes. Big discovery here as Mars was moving through Scorpio. Then Mars moved into Ophiuchus, where things got really crazy or really serious, where the healing really started to happen. And as Mars was finishing out his transit through Ophiuchus, and partially with Mars being in Scorpio as well, but specifically while Mars was uh, finishing out his transit in Ophiuchus, 
Mars made a square to Neptune. Um, so I did do a video on that specifically as well. It's titled Mars Square Neptune Shadows of Efforts Past. Check that out because I really go into depth and detail about how this Mars Square Neptune aspect may have really been affecting us on a collective level. For you specifically, Libra, this Mars was in your second house. It started in your second house, your house of values and how you make money, okay? Ruled by Venus, which has been retrograde, also your planetary ruler. Mars was transiting through the second house as he had made that square with Neptune. And with all of the influence Venus has over your changing environment in terms of your values and love and all that kind of stuff, it was very unescapable as Mars was moving through your second house where your values are being changed already, reshaped and realigned. So there were some things that were coming up here uh, in terms of your expression of the way that you nurture yourself or your values, okay? And so I feel like that really influenced you to stand up and speak up. There is something, as I'm feeling through it now, Libra, there's something inescapable about this, okay? very Plutonian. Uh, but as I was channeling through that energy and, and realizing that this is another aspect that's causing you to stand up and speak up about something, I heard the phrase, don't be such a pushover. So a lot of the reshaping in values that has happened for you, Vir uh, not Virgo, why did I want to say Virgo? Maybe you have a Virgo placement. Maybe you are a Virgo Libra cusper. Ah, but also the Virgo connection is the fact that over the month of January, Virgo was in an energy of coming out of the closet about something, about how they can love themselves better. And it's very similar for you, Libra. I mean, you're right next to each other, so that makes sense. But yeah, now that I think about it, Libra, it does kind of feel like you're kind of coming out of the closet about something too, about how you can better treat yourself, about how you can better love and nurture yourself, okay? So the phrase there, as I was channeling through that was, don't be such a pushover. Libra, stand up for yourself, right? Um, now, the next thing about that is also you have Jupiter in your fifth house. So like I said, like I mentioned in the monthly collective reading or channeled messages for February, Ma uh, I'm sorry, the sun is conjuncting with Saturn during the month of February. And it feels like Saturn is creating a bit of a roadblock in terms of not really allowing you to move forward until you implement certain changes in your life to help get you <laughs> the chariot just came out to help put you in direct alignment with your trajectory forward your highest most beneficial highest vibrational trajectory forward okay making sure that you've done your work, technically, basically checking your work to say, did you do what was necessary for you to get into this next alignment? And so for you, Libra, that feels like speaking up somehow. And the thing about that is Libra, all you really have to do here is speak up, tell the truth, be honest. You can't change, you can't affect, you have no control over how other people receive that message you have to send. But that, quite frankly, is out of your hands. That's not your responsibility. The most you can do is your part. And it feels like doing your part here, Libra, is speaking your truth. What is in authentic alignment with you, all right? Now, with that said, moving forward in the month of March, the sun will be conjuncting with Jupiter. And that kind of feels like the payoff moment. And all of this is happening in your fifth house. Jupiter's in the fifth house, Neptune's in the fifth house. So it feels like there's some sort of payoff that's gonna come forward for us. Should we take the time to make the changes that are necessary or required in order to get there? Now, like I've been saying, Saturn is not trying to be an asshole here. Saturn's never really trying to be an asshole here, okay? <laughs> but he's saying these things or he's making these changes or, or requiring these changes literally because the vibration or that we're trying to get into or the movement forward that we're trying to align with, align with requires, requires a higher vibration. There is literally no way around it. I'm not trying to be an asshole, says Saturn. This is just the way it is, okay? Okay. Um, anything else you want to say to Libra while we're here on this chariot energy spirit? Yeah. 
Go forward. First card out here is the Nine of Wands. Just go. Just do it, Libra. Just push forward. Be Dory in, in uh, uh, Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming, okay? No matter what this happens, for, no matter what happens for you, no matter how things crumble or fall down around you, or at least how they seem to, it doesn't matter. What really matters here is that you are really truly in alignment, the chariot. And if that's the case, all you really need to do is just persevere and allow the chips to fall where they will, allow the dust to settle as it will in due time. Overall energy here for you, Libra, is the fool. Go ahead and take that leap of faith. Change your alignment. Change your outlook to things. Accept this new reality. Accept this new way forward because it absolutely is going to benefit you. Yeah, The universe wouldn't put anything in our way or challenge us with anything if it wouldn't benefit us. Okay? All right. I want to move, I want to move back to the fourth house influence here for you. And this is actually where I got that message of um, you can't control how others respond. But the message has to do with a greater sense of personal nurturance, like I've said already. Um, and then I also say here, Saturn, Sun conjunction, hold you in place until you at least communicate it. Until you at least communicate it. You can't control how others respond, but at least you've done your part. And what's come out here in terms of that is the Six of Swords. You, you are really trying to move forward. And this really feels like you're trying to move forward in a way that is in greater alignment with a better way to nurture yourself. And a lot of this change in this way that you nurture yourself and also, I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of this change or the, the new message that you have to send is stemming from personal experience. So the Mars Neptune square may have, especially with the fact that your uh, your values, your alignment to your values have probably changed quite drastically. As Mars was squaring up with Neptune, all kinds of memories may have surfaced in terms of how you were loving and nurturing yourself in maybe a bit of a detrimental way. And I get a very strong energy of not wanting to do that any longer. Again, all you really have to do here is to speak up. What's being facilitated for you, Libra, is a way forward. Moving away from rough waters into calmer waters. Yes, people are gonna lose their minds. Yes, narcissists are gonna try and redo the riot act. But quite frankly, Libra, none of that matters. None of that matters. And anybody that doesn't wanna come with you on this journey is not in alignment, and that is perfectly okay, all right? You don't have to feel bad about that. What do we have next? Yeah. Yeah, giving voice to your new emotions. You have the Page of Cups here to the Ace of Cups. And this is all happening because you love yourself. Maybe you've always felt that you've loved yourself, but now you're loving yourself in a brand new way. The Page of Cups is that new emotional reality as well. But also the Page of Cups feels like giving voice to that new emotion or to that new sense of self-love, self-care. Okay, overall energy at this point is judgment to the Page of Wands. Libra, it is time. It is time to send this new message. It is time to be in this new alignment. It is time to start this new creative project. It is time for you to stand up or show up in this new way. Judgment to the Page of Wands, okay? And absolutely, the Page of Wands does represent a bit of a messenger type energy, okay? Sorry for hitting the mic there. Um, I, that is the end of my notes. Uh, let me just look at the chart one more time, see if there's anything I wanna talk to you about. We talked about Mars. We talked about Saturn. Ah, okay, Uranus. Now, okay, so let me let me explain this part to you here, Libra. Um, again, and this is another part of, uh, this is something that I got into. I think this was actually something that I touched on in the general collective reading for February. If you haven't read that, go ahead, or, or watch that, go ahead and watch it, yeah? Um, uh-huh, but, so Saturn here. Saturn is kind of creating this like checkpoint for us, right? Show me your work. Let me see what you've done, how you have gotten, how you have worked towards getting into this new alignment. And Saturn really isn't going to let us move forward, is not going to let us through the gate of the new reality if we are not working towards that new alignment. We're not saying that by the time the sun conjuncts with Saturn, which by the way happens every year, once every year at least, 
Um, so it's really not that big of a deal, but also in the energetic climate, in terms of everything that's going on here, this is something to take a note of, all right? We're not saying that you have to have everything in place, prim and proper, you know, cleaned up, glossed up, ready to go by the time the sun conjuncts with Saturn. No, you have to at least have been starting to put this in practice or put this in place because that's all that's required for you here. All right. But there is a very revolutionary side of Saturn here that I was that was coming through just as I was channeling. And I had to dig deep into the aspects here to really understand why. But with that, the Two of Wands has come out here and Saturn is kind of creating a roadblock and is saying you can either continue in the path that you've been going on and stay stuck and stagnant where you are, or you can take this new path. So it feels like Saturn is hell bent <laughs> on change here, right? Which doesn't necessarily, at first glance, is not what Saturn represents traditionally, right? Not necessarily. Saturn rules Capricorn, which is that driving the status quo forward type of energy. Yes. But Saturn also traditionally rules Aquarius and Aquarius is the revolutionary side of Saturn. And this is where Saturn says to you, time marches on and so shall we. Even if that drives change, even if it means change, often it does mean change. So I was getting that very Aquarian side of Saturn and I was like, wow, that's interesting, especially since Saturn is in Capricorn right now. What's going on here? Well, at this moment, Let's see. Currently on the 1st of February, if you can see here, but you can also see it in the aspects section right here. In the month of February, Saturn is squaring with Uranus. Boop, 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 right? And Uranus, which is associated with Aquarius, who is, excuse me, associated with Aquarius. Uranus is a big time liberator. Uranus is all about freedom is all about expansion, is all about technical advances, technological advances, and freeing you from some of the structures that Saturn had you put in place for whatever reason, right? Well, Uranus was retrograde in Aries for a while. From end of, Feb I'm sorry, end of August, 2021 into end of January, 2022. And as the sun is conjuncting up with Saturn here and Saturn's creating this checkpoint for us, this roadblock saying you can't move forward until you make change. Well, Saturn is squaring with Uranus. So there is that Uranian Aquarian revolutionizing change inducing aspect. And Uranus is in your seventh house your house of interpersonal relationships, your home in terms of the housing system, Libra. So you have a choice to make. You, my dear, have a choice to make. Two of wands. And really, the real choice here is, are you going to speak up or not? Because if not, ain't nothing going to change. You're going to get on further down the road and find yourself in the exact same place that you knew you didn't want to be, and you're just going to have to wait for the next moment. Or you can speak up from love, Ace of Cups. Love yourself enough to speak up, Libra. Don't be such a pushover. And I say that with all the love in the world, babe. I do. But y'all know what I mean. Because Libra, Libra is all about finding the balance, and that's beautiful. But often, Libras can, Librans can get lost in the sauce of all of the different things or different opinions or different desires that they're trying to facilitate for people. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're losing yourself in the process. Don't do that anymore. Because actually, quite frankly, Libra, that doesn't serve anybody. Five of Swords. That is a lose-lose situation because ultimately at that point, you're really just enabling people in their toxicity, in their low vibration, in their single-mindedness, whatever. And on top of that, you lose out as well. Why? Because you get depleted. And quite frankly, Libra, we don't want that anymore. No, you deserve to be of service to the people that you love without being depleted. Yes. Anything else, anything else we have for Libra here, please spirit. What else do you want to say to Libra? <laughs> Just like Taurus, mm-hmm. There's that four of cups. Oh, 
I don't want to. Why don't you want to, Libra? Like, what can we say? What can we say to Libra about this? What What do we have for Libra about this? Oh, 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 well, look at that. At the bottom of the deck, we're back to the Six of Swords. I understand that change is scary, but like you're a mutable sign, Libra. So, okay, change isn't all that bad for you. Actually, it's the easiest to facilitate for you, right? Because even the fix, even the, even the cardinal signs have their stubborn aspects that, you know, when the change affects them, they often don't really like it. Whatever. And I'm not trying to slight anybody. I've got fixed and cardinal energy wrapped up within me in all kinds of places, so I get it. <laughs> but anyway, Four of Cups, Libra. And I'm hearing you're reluctant to leave the past behind, but that is literally exactly what you need to do. Six of Swords is the overall energy. There's power in that as well. Underneath the Six of Swords is, oh shit. <laughs> Underneath the Six of Swords is the Emperor. So there's the power in it. You be the authority of your life. If this is what you are needing or this is what you are guiding people or you're being guided to guide people towards, if that's the position, that the role that you hold, there's power in that. But also there is a reason for it is what the emperor energy type tries to say. Because yes, the emperor can be very controlling. The emperor is like the divine masculine, right? But the emperor is controlling in a healthy way in order to create or facilitate structure so that the desires of the realm that he serves can be fulfilled. Very much like if you want a certain type of baked good, let's say you want an angel food cake. Well, you can't really make an angel food cake by following a chocolate cake recipe. I mean, that is so blatantly obvious, right? One has chocolate, the other has doesn't, unless you're trying to make a chocolate angel food cake. I'm convinced, <laughs> I'm, I'm comparing a vanilla regular angel food cake to a dense, rich, beautifully chocolate cake. Completely different recipe, right? So if you want an angel food cake, the emperor comes through and says, all right, here's the recipe, follow the plan. So that's why you have to follow through with a certain thing. That's why Saturn is coming through and saying with you, at least speak up if you wanna facilitate this change, which ultimately is bringing you justice. There you are, Libra. And this is underneath the emperor. Shit, you really want me to spell it out for you? Underneath justice is the eight of wands. Communic, oh my God. The eight of wands to the nine of pentacles to the world. Libra, 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 communicate. You are an individual. I know you're a mutable sign. No, I'm sorry, you're not a mutable sign. You're a cardinal sign. Libra is the cardinal sign. Gemini is the mutable sign. I'm so sorry. I am so, 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 so sorry. <laughs> but you are the... Okay, but you are the cardinal sign, Libra. You, of all of us, lead change. The mutable signs have easier time with change all around just because they're so damn flexible and good for them. See, but this is where I got into the other thing. If like cardinal signs are all about driving change until it has to be changed within themselves. And that's, that's humanity, babe. Like, don't take that personally. That's fucking humanity. Okay. But you're allowed to fill you're allowed to communicate about the about facilitating the changes that you need as an independent individual as a free thinker nine of pentacles to the eight of wands to the world you have a message to send libra speak up all right trust yourself honor your intuition honor yourself let's get you some closing messages yes we're going to get you to close some closing oracle guidance from the magic of unicorns deck I'm gonna give this three shuffles. One. For my Libra rising. This is two. And this is three. All right, Libra. Overall energy is card number 36, B 
a beacon. Be an inspiration. Light the way for others. So now the dominant message that I was getting was like interpersonal relationships, specifically romance. But there are some of you that are spiritual guides, leaders, teachers, healers, some of that that are connecting with this message. There is your confirmation. Be a beacon. Okay. Finally, you have card number 23, soul satisfaction. Honor your uniqueness. Do what makes you feel good. Okay, some of you just asked the question, do I have to feel good at the expense of other people? That's your general, that's your main concern here. That's tricky, Libra. Because what I feel like in that is the ways that you've been being of service to other people that makes them feel good and yet you want to go in a di different direction and you're facing the fact that they're not going to feel good as a result of it. <sighs> That's kind of their problem. Yes, to a certain extent, it's yours too because, or at least there's some responsibility you need to take there because you've been enabling this, but times have changed, I just heard, and we just need to roll with it. And regardless as to whatever you have held up in the past or whatever it is you've worked towards in the past, if that no longer resonates with you, if you feel good doing something different, then by all means, Libra, do something different. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to pause for a moment, regroup, reset, and then we will get into the second half, the non-denominational half of this reading. Yes? Stay tuned. Hello, my dear Libras. Welcome to the second half, the non-denominational half of this reading. Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in. So we're going to just be speaking to the big old collective of Libra energy. Yes, so this could be for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, or whatever placement, planetary placement you have within Libra, or wherever you have Libra in your chart that you're curious about. Yes, this could definitely resonate with you, all right? But keep in mind, it's still a general reading. Also, this section of the reading would probably be best in alignment or most in alignment with a cross watcher if you're crossing on what cross watching on behalf of a libra yes let's get into some tarot messages for you we're going to start here i'm going to give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for you this month libra yeah here we go for my libras sun moon rising venus and beyond what messages do we have for libra that was one this is two for libra Four. And five. All right, Libra. Let's see what we've got for you this month. What messages do we have for Libra this month? Okay, Libra. First card that's come out for you here is the Two of Pentacles in reverse. And with that, I heard something here has fallen out of balance. And what I'm getting with the Two of Pentacles in reverse is that you're scrambling to keep something together, to hold something up, to prop something up, when in reality, all you really need to do is just let it fall. With that, we have the Tower. And then overall energy here is the Seven of Wands. Yeah. Overall energy is the seven of wands to the three of wands to the wheel of fortune. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I know that. that sorry for hitting the mic like that. Um, seven of wands to the three of wands to the wheel of fortune. With this Libra, I feel like you're literally trying, again, you're trying to hold together a certain path that you've been focused on, a certain direction you've been moving in, a certain level of... Um, what's the word, um, um, momentum that you have generated in a certain path, but that's changing and you need to allow that to change. 
instead of holding your ground, seven of wands, in terms of just moving forward and allowing things to change, three of pentacles, I'm sorry, three of wands to the wheel of fortune, I feel like you're trying to hold on to the status quo here and resisting a certain level of change that's being facilitated here for you. Some of that has to do with the people around you, your interpersonal relationships. That is a big focus for you, I feel, over this time period. Um, and one of the things that came through, I, I, I channeled a question that somebody within the Libra Collective was asking. And that question was, and, I, and this came through th uh, during the um, Libra Rising section of this video, but that question was some having something to do with like asking if going into a certain direction that is in greater alignment with you or makes you happier should you really do that if it's going to negatively or adversely affect the people around you but libra that's kind of the problem because i feel like here if you are trying to keep up a certain status quo just for the sole reason of keeping the peace that is 100 percent absolutely no holds barred unadulterated rejection of yourself especially if, if it leaves you depleted and unnurtured and there's a big feeling here for you libra at this time period of loving and caring and nurturing for yourself in a different way in a much more beneficial way and yes that could that could rub some people around you the wrong way but excuse my language but so the fuck what you can't keep you can't continue to give of yourself just to keep the peace, just to keep from rocking the boat when you're suffering because of it. So there's one more card that's come out here for you, Libra, with these three cards or with these two other cards that have come out on the table. But this card came out face down. Energy's underneath the surface. <laughs> Damn, it's the hanged man. Libra, you are literally being held in this position, unable to move forward. Saturn conjuncting with the sun, creating a checkpoint saying, let me check your work. If you haven't done so already, go back to the February live stream, the big collective channeling and live stream that I did just kind of describing the overall energy for the collective for the month of February. There is a checkpoint when the sun conjuncts with Saturn, that's creating an energetic checkpoint where Saturn is saying to you, I am not going to let you move forward in this new path until you get it, until you start to at least start to facilitate or put in place the changes that are required for you to reach a higher vibrational energy so that come in March, when the sun conjuncts with Jupiter, you can be on the receiving end of that expanded energy or that higher vibration or what that higher vibration is meaning to, is trying to, is meant to bring into your life. With that said, I want to direct you guys back to the live stream that I did about Jupiter being in Aquarius and needing to follow your inner child because your inner child, fifth house energies for my Libra risings here, yes? Your inner child knows the way out of this, knows how to get you to that next level. So if you're unfamiliar with that one, go back. Jupiter in Aquarius, allow your inner child to lead the way. And that's not the official title for that reading, but Jupiter in Aquarius. <laughs> yeah, go with that. But, and it's the same thing I said to Taurus, which makes sense because both of y'all are ruled by Venus. Now, Venus retrograde has probably been super heavy for you. Changing your personal alignment to interpersonal relationships and also your values which also affects the alignment of your interpersonal relationships and the big thing for you libra the very bare minimum that saturn is requiring for you as we hit approach this checkpoint is speak up speak up libra defend yourself stand up for yourself don't be such a pushover and what the hanged man is saying here for you is this is not going to make sense or you are not going to be able to move forward here. You're going to be stuck in this situation or in this time frame or this energetic alignment. You're going to be stuck here until you change your perspective and do something differently. That is everything that the hanged man represents because this man is hung from a tree by his or from some sort of scaffolding or whatever. 
by his wrist, by, by his ankle. But you see the illumination in his around his head represents that change in perspective, represents that light bulb, that aha moment where it's like, oh, that's what this means. Or, oh, that's what this is. Or, oh, I can look at it from this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I kind of want to, I want to focus on the hanged man energies for you a little bit more. What's this hanged man for Libra? What advice can we give Libra for this hanged man energy? Damn, look, five of pentacles in reverse, facilitating some, some sort of lack mentality, lent, mac, blah, 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 facilitating some sort of lack mentality, whether that's it within yourself or directly experienced from others around you. But understand, if it's something that you're directly experiencing or you're experiencing directly from the people around you, it's because you have some sort of energetic alignment with that within yourself. Okay. So maybe you're maybe you're not as in as in much of a lack mentality as as other people are. But you are approaching them from that sense of lack mentality and facilitating that somehow and that's just enabling them. This has to be let go of. Okay. Anything else for the hanged man energy for Libra? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Overall energy Libra is the Knight of Wands now. And again, remember, we're clarifying, speaking deeper to this hanged man energy for you. Knight of Wands, but of course, of course, there we go, right back to the Four of Cups, which I did talk about in the Libra Rising section of this reading. You are being guided to move in a new direction, Libra. Sagittarian energy, this, uh, which is represented by the Knight of Wands. And who has been retrograde in Sagittarius? Not only, none other than your ruling planet of Venus. <laughs> so you're being guided, led, influenced to take up a new charge but you are reluctant to take that leap off the cliff. Four of cups to the fool. And underneath the fool is the empress, which is Venus, which is your alignments, which is unconditionally loving people, but sometimes unconditionally loving people by enabling them. You gotta make a decision. You're either going to step in, step forward into the future or you're going to stay stuck in the past. There's the Hierophant, the status quo. You have got to be bold here, Libra, King of Wands, and start this new path, this new direction, this new chapter for yourself, Knight of Pentacles, and walk away from what it is you have been holding on to. Eight of Cups to the Four of Pentacles. For some of you, that is a romantic relationship. Two of Cups. And then there you are, Libra justice you by aligning with this you are facilitating justice in your life you are manifesting justice in your life you are literally bringing it in to your life by following through with whatever this is for you and for the most part this just feels like like the main message here is at least just speak up speak your truth speak your authenticity libra you have no control over how people receive that message, but you know what? At least you did your part. That is all that is required of you here. And I understand how big of a hurdle that can be for you, especially when it seems that other people's lives could be negatively affected by this. But with this, Continuing to clarify the hanged man. At first you had the five of pentacles in reverse. Yes, now you have the eight of pentacles with the nine of wands. Just do the work and just keep going. Take the steps, go through the motions, speak truth to your feelings, speak authentically, and just keep going. No matter what that means for you. Yes, Libra, yes, Libra. You already had the tower come out here. So yes, something's crumbling. Something's coming down. Some sort of relationship is about to end, potentially. But even, okay, you know what? You know what? Let me get, 
<laughs> Let me get into some love cards for you, Libra. Because even as I was channeling just like, like, like when I was looking at the chart, just really channeling for the Libra rising section and also kind of drawing on the energies of Libra anyway, it felt there was a heavy focus for Libra specifically within the realm of love and romance. So some of you have gone through this change in your personal alignment, your values system, and that change could be in alignment with a, a level of greater and more beneficial and more healthy love and nurturance for yourself. And some of you have a message. Well, there is a message to send, but specifically for some of you, this is to a partner, someone that you've been dating for a hot second or someone that you've been with for a long term. The long term situation is really tricky because now you're facing the, op the, the, the reality of you were one person or you were a certain type of person before when this relationship came together. And now seemingly out of nowhere, although I do say seemingly uh, specifically, seemingly out of nowhere now you're this different person with different needs and you're afraid to express that because you don't want to rock the boat you don't want to create tension you maybe don't even want this person to leave you or you don't want to have to leave this other person but uh, if you're going to love yourself more if you're going to be in more alignment with this loving of yourself then why would you let a certain situation or relationship stay the same? Let's get some love energies here. Three shuffles. I'm using the lover's oracle. Yeah? Uh, the love oracle deck. Excuse me. One. What messages do we have for Libra here in terms of these interpersonal romantic situations? This is two. In an in, in effort to speak your truth, needing to speak up, needing to defend yourself or stand up for yourself, this is three. What do we have for Libra here? Guidance to Libra. Now, the other thing that I was channeling Libra um, was that a lot of the change that is needing to, to be facilitated, the message that you have to send at this point is for many of you or many of us in this collective here is heavily associated with your own personal experiences, what you've experienced in the past and how that has shaped and reshaped you over this time period, right? So with this, you do have the very first card out is talking, interested, conversing more, a weighted message arrives, text, call, email, hoovering? Why does that say hoovering? Is that referring to like a hoover, like a, 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 a vacuum cleaner? Maybe it's supposed to say hovering. I don't know. But there you go. There it is right there. You need, you have a message to send, Libra. For some of you, ooh, this is juicy. For some of you, um, you've been waiting on a message from your, from your mate, a potential mate, or your partner has been waiting on a message for you, from you, excuse me. Now you're finally communicating that, or now they're finally communicating that, or at least you're being guided to, right? With that, you have heartbroken and self-indulgence. The self-indulgence card does represent being focused on self, doing self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation. You may have been in a pretty serious uh, hermit mode and someone has been awaiting a message from you and now you're ready to send that message but you have you're aware of this message you're ready to send this message because you took some time to yourself and focused on how you are or have been heartbroken and the message that is coming through for you here or from you either through or from is having to do with unbreaking your heart heart with a key welcoming love meeting the one opening your heart at the bottom of the deck Yes, go ahead, sing that song. Who is it by? Gosh, how can I not remember her name right now? She was one of my favorite singers growing up, but Unbreak My Heart, Tony Braxton, there we go. Now, actually, now that I think about the lyrics there, Libra, that, that might be a little toxic. Unbreak my heart, say you love me again. Undo this hurt you caused when you walked out the door and walked out of my life. Ooh, that's a little codependent, isn't it? Ooh, icky. Oh, but hey, 
it's relevant so take it take it as it resonates any <laughs> anything else for libra from this deck please? yeah mm -hmm. yeah look look libra Ooh, and there's the codependency overall energy is addiction codependent obsession passion controlling you might be dealing with a very controlling individual has a block and restraint libra literally literally the message here is you have a message to send and you need to talk about it coffee cup meeting and conversing S uh, savoring the moment feeling uplifted friendship i have a question for you libra how beneficial is this relationship if you cannot come forward and speak your mind or say how it is you truly feel for the fear that someone is going to shoot you down how beneficial is that relationship like really be honest with yourself libra if you can't bring your fears your concerns your needs your requirements to the relationship to a partner that uplifts you from that point then quite frankly libra that is not a partner you need to be with at all you are much better off being single keeping with yourself doing this self-indulgence this self-care energy and healing because i promise you i promise you libra if you take the time to be with yourself and heal you will never have to align with another person that doesn't honor you and doesn't uplift you in your lowest moments ever again. Why? Because you will have healed the energetic vibration within you that causes you to align with individuals like that. This is not about keeping the peace here. This is not about uh, uh, keeping up with the status quo. And this is definitely not about moving in a way that cautiously, so overly cautiously that you don't rock the boat. Fuck that because that leaves you depleted at the end, Libra. And that is not what we want here. You, with all of the service that you bring to the collective, with all of the ways that you try and find balance for other people, gosh darn it, you should be able to be on the beneficial side of that balance as well. We are not going to have you out here balancing things out for other people while throwing yourself overboard. Nah, walk the plank. Why? You just spent all this time making sure everyone else around you was comfortable and now they want to deem now they want to condemn you to the plank? Fuck off. No. And I'm not I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. I'm not going to be nice about that. Fuck off. You don't deserve my time or presence, says the Libra. Or at least the Libra sh would benefit from saying it in some cases. Like it doesn't have to be that extreme, but for some of you it is in fact that extreme. And you have every right to repeat the words that I just said myself. Period. I love you. Okay. <laughs> For you, Libra. Yeah, we're going to get this from the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Five shuffles. One. Two. Excellent. Overall energy here, Libra, you do have card number 34, which boils down to a seven, spiritual, mystical, enlightenment, and good luck also from, but but luck from um, rewards from past efforts, yes? Which is what seven tends to represent in terms of the luck aspect. But you have opening, excuse me, opening to discovery. You're literally opening a door to a brand new reality, a brand new true sense of self or a brand new truer you, okay? 
card that's come out here for you is card number 20, a merry motive. And you know, this feels very important for you to understand, to you, for you to clearly get through your mind, Libra. Your efforts here are not meant to be detrimental. The tower that's coming down here is not because you're just trying to be destructive. You're just trying to be egoic. You're just trying to get your way. No, there is a merry motive here. There is a positive beneficial motive here. Okay. You are best of service to those around you when you are in tip top tape, your tip top shape yourself. And so anybody that tries to demonize you or tell you you're wrong for setting certain boundaries or holding yourself and subsequently the others around you to a higher standard, you're not wrong for that. You don't have an ulterior motive. You don't have a, 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 a damaging or uh, um, um, intentionally hurtful motive. No, you're just trying to love yourself better. And if there are people around you that can't get on board with that, please just let them go. They don't deserve your time, attention, or presence, or energy, all right? Excellent, Libra. I am going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a personal reading with me, whether that be from the true sidereal practice or just tarot or a combination of both, please don't hesitate to email me. All My email can be found in the description box below. If you would like extra content with me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below as well. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. Yeah. I hope you guys have a fantastic month. I am sending you so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes. Beauty must take care. Bye. <laughs>